to another episode of Jermaine Morgan TV. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to start keeping up with the gospel cast. So stay tuned. All right, so right off we have this groove. It's grooving in the key of C minor. Now the song is originally in the key of E flat. This is a song I wrote and produced for an artist, uh, Pastor Clinton McFarland. If you wanna check that song out, I will link it here so you can hear the full song in context. But I wanted to create this backing track to give you guys more of a live feel, more of a, a sense of playing with a multi-piece band. So you have guitar, you got horns, you got keyboards, live drums, a little bit of everything happening in the track that gives you the sense of really playing with the band, but also gives you, okay, what would I do in a situation like this where everything is very, very high energy? It's a very, very simple progression. And I have the progression, as usual, lined out on the backing track. But it, it starts out in that, that just grooving on that C minor. Boom. Boom. And we just walk down to that E, F, G, A flat. E, F, G, A flat. E, F. And it just keeps repeating that G. A flat, E, F, G, B flat, back to the C minor, okay? And so it's just a really, really simple groove. When you hear everything in context, sometimes it sounds like a lot is going on. And a lot of times I understand you guys can get very confused in terms of, man, what in the world do I play over this? Now, my advice in a groove like this, after you've learned the progression and all that kind of stuff, have fun, relax. It should never feel like pressure. It should never feel like you're working. When you're playing something that's this fun, you should never feel like, it shouldn't feel like work to you. So the thing about it, you have so much space in a groove like this to be creative. What you heard me in the beginning doing, I was playing so many different variations of ways to get around that simple progression because I mean, my bass line is literally, like if you listen to what the guitar is doing here, the guitar is kind of laying out what the bass line is, that pulse on that C minor with those power chords. Check it out. All right, so that's the meat and potatoes of what your bass groove is. Bum, 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 bum. Now the thing is, when you're playing a groove like that, and there's so much space. The biggest thing we want to always do, and I said this many times, we want to uh, establish the foundation. But many of you guys listen to these videos and you're like, man, wait a minute now. Those gospel cats are doing way more than what the original record had on it. And a lot of times that happens because in live situations in a gospel environment, depending on where you are, they want more. They want more energy. So in a, in a situation where you have a little bit more freedom, like in your church service or something like that, you're going to have a little bit more freedom to be a little bit more creative. So don't waste those moments that they give you to have more freedom. So what I would do in a situation like this, I was just playing basically a groove off the C minor pentatonic. So... And don't worry if you don't have a five string bass, it doesn't matter. So if you're on a four string, so. So we're playing that octave C. And then we're going dominant, E flat, F, G, B flat, C. Straight, minor pentatonic. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that groove and putting it over the top of of that C minor. So because I'm on that C minor, so that means I can pretty much get away with anything over C minor as long as I make it groove. That's an unwritten rule for bass players. Just remember that in gospel, it's an unwritten rule. Depending on the song, when it's a really, really fun song and the foundation has pretty much been established, you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff as long as you're making it groove and it's not clashing with anything else that's going on in the song. So like for instance, again, we'll play this groove here. Alright, 
And so the other thing that you'll hear me do as I go into this next section, instead of waiting for it, you see the, the chord changes are suggesting that I wait to go to that E. But what we always want to do as bass players, as much as possible, try to lead people into the next section if there's an opportunity for you to do so. So instead of waiting to get to that E just straight out of the C, I lead into it. And a lot of you guys just slide, which sometimes that's okay. It's okay to slide into the next section. But every now and again, lead us in. Show us where we're going as a bass player. That's taking that leadership role. Lead in. And notice I did a slide before I got to that lead in. I still got my little slide in my bass player slide in there. But I wanted to lead into that next section of going from that E to that F solo. And then the other thing I'm doing in there is I'm adding my ghost notes with the octaves. I'm playing the fifth and the octave. So, five, one, G to the A flat. Something simple. See, a lot of you guys might just get on that and just play. You see those chord changes? You're just staying on the E, F, G, A flat, and you're not moving. In a song that has this much high energy, you want to have something moving. And it doesn't mean you got to be running all over the place or playing all this extra stuff, but just moving a little bit more, making your bass line have just a little bit more bounce to it. So another thing we want to do is we want to be listening to the chords while we're playing so we can see what we can add. So in this particular context... All right, so if we hear that first, we know that's more like a diminish. That's an E diminish to that minor, F minor, to that G minor, to the A flat major. If you don't know all of the chords yet, don't worry yourself about it. Just try to pick out as many notes as you can. So many of you guys put so much emphasis on trying to know all of it right away. That's not necessary. If you have a gig on Sunday, you're not gonna learn all your chords between now and Sunday. It would be great if you did, but the reality of it is you might not learn all your chords. So what you wanna do as a bass player is start picking out certain notes. I don't know all the notes in this chord, but I can hear two of them. So if you can hear two of them, just play those two notes. So if you're hearing. Now let's see if that matches what we have going on here. Don't beat yourself up if you can't hear all the chords. You're like, man, I can't hear all these chords and I can't pull out all that stuff. Pull out what you can. That's another rule to bass players. A lot of you guys that watch these videos, you're very technical. You know all your chord names. You know all this different stuff. But there are a lot of cats that are in gospel who we don't focus on all of that stuff. We don't focus on all the chord names. Now, the, the more advanced you get, the more you learn your instrument. Yes, that's something that's very essential for you to learn if you have the opportunity to do so. So you know what a diminished sound like. You're not guessing for it. You know what a minor sounds like? And you know what a major seven sounds like? So you're not guessing at those chords when you want to pull them out. But in the meantime, when you're trying to figure this stuff out, you're listening to these records, just pick out some notes. And as you're picking these notes out, stuff will start to kind of sound similar to you. So from one song to the next, you start to be able to pick out stuff I'm like, oh, okay, I recognize that. That was in this song before. Or that was in that, that groove Jermaine put up. It was something similar to that. So I know I can use this because they have similarities. So you start looking for similarities and things. And, and the biggest thing at the end of the day, don't be scared to take risk. Don't be scared to take chances. Are you gonna mess up? Yeah, you're gonna probably mess up more times than not when you're first getting started, when you're first learning to stretch out, but that's part of the process. That's part of you growing and getting out of your shell, playing it safe, playing everything by the book, being really, really structured. Nothing wrong with structure, but at some point, you gotta have a little fun. And I think that's the biggest thing that separates a lot of the gospel players from other genres. Not saying that other genres don't have fun, Please don't take this as a slight to any other genre. I love other genres all the way across the board, but I know a lot of you guys have been studying the gospel musicians trying to figure this out, trying to figure this thing out. It's a lot of stuff that's embedded in our culture because we grew up listening to this music. It's almost like we were bathed 
in this music. So when we plan something and it has a type of groove like this, it's just fun. It's equivalent to a kid going to the playground, having a good time. We're not focused on all this other stuff. We're not only focused on executing the music properly, but we're focused on enjoying the music, having a great time and making sure that everybody on the stage is feeling exactly what it is you're doing. So these are just a few tips to kind of help you navigate through this gospel stuff as you guys are on this journey to learn more about gospel bass playing. Remember, this is your number one resource to find out more about the gospel bass playing. I have backing tracks for you guys. I will link this backing track so that you can go and get started today working on this backing track. And ultimately, guys, my goal is to always help you unlock your sound. If you want to continue in this lesson, I encourage you to be one of the monthly members if you haven't done that already of JermaineMorgan.net. If not, be sure to press the subscribe button, turn on my notifications, and I will see you guys on the next video. I'm out. Peace.